Uh, good morning. Are we good? We're working on our technology, so hold on just a second. We are live streamed, um, so Eric's checking on things to make sure we're good. Okay, good morning. Is that good, Eric? Okay, all right. Uh, good morning to everybody. Um, this is the School Mental Health Advisory Council. Uh, we are actually uh, most of us in person today. So uh, it's been a while since we've seen uh, your faces not in the little square on the screen. So uh, welcome. Uh, I'm Kathy Bush. I'm the chair of the School Mental Health Advisory Council. And uh, we are here today in Wichita. Uh, we meet uh, annually, usually late summer in July, uh, here uh, at Wichita uh, while the Special Ed Advisory Council is also meeting. And then we will have lunch with them as we are both advisory councils to advise the board. Uh, we feel like it's good to have a joint session. We'll meet with them at lunchtime. Uh, we'll have a joint session with the Special Ed Advisory Council uh, today, and so we can kind of interact with them. Uh, we certainly service some of the same kids, uh, so we want to uh, have an opportunity to have a little conversation with them while we're uh, having our lunch. Uh, again, this is our first session live uh, in person, and sitting next to my vice chair here, Jane Groff. So, uh, uh, we're glad to be here today and glad that so many of you could come. I know some of you are on live stream, so those of you on live stream, welcome. We're glad that you could uh, tune in today and join us today for uh, this meeting. Uh, we Our next meeting is October 13th, I believe I have that right, and that will also be a in live session, but I think we will also have a virtual opportunity there. Am I right, Kayla? She's nodding her head, so we will have a virtual opportunity, as I know for some people that does work better. So uh, we're excited to be here today. We've got a number of topics. We're gonna spend a good bit of time today kind of uh, projecting forward and kind of looking at and determining kind of where does this council need to go. Shanna's gonna lead us in a number of activities today, uh, thinking about uh, as an advisory council uh, and the organizations that we advise, we need to think about that too. What kind of advice are they going to need? What things do we need to be thinking about as we move forward? You know, whenever we think back on the number of things we've done, if you think back at this council, we've accomplished a lot over the last several years. I believe it's been three years that we've been, maybe four, I've lost track. Maybe five? <laughs> okay, we think we're, my gosh. We think we're up to five. So uh, we've, uh, we've done a lot of work on this council and it continues to be important. As you all know, um, the things that are going on in our schools, uh, the mental health uh, supports are certainly a, an important and necessary thing. So the council does provide that advice to the board and other organizations. So again, thanks for everybody's hard work. We've got a lot of new members that uh, this is probably their first time to be see you in person, so we're glad to see folks. I popped around and said hello to most people before. Uh, some of you have come in, so we're glad to have everybody here. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Shanna. She's going to do some uh, welcomes and introductions. Uh, I think we're going to start with an introductory activity. So I'm going to pass this mic over to you. teacher so I really like activities so we are going to do um, an introductory activity before we do that I'd like to go ahead I guess I need it. Um, Carrie Haig is our assistant director um, over special education and then Bert Moore is the director um, special education for KSDE so I wanted to point them out if you need anything from them today Eric is our technology guy he's amazing um, we have Lisa and Kayla Okay, so in your packet, you should have just 
It's a blank piece of okay. paper. I had a packet. Mm. I stole it, maybe. <laughs> and I want you to draw a line down the middle of it vertically. Or either way. It doesn't matter. Help you work. But draw a line down the middle. On one side, you're going to draw a symbol of your workplace. And on the other side, you're going to draw a symbol of your personal life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As you draw these, I want you to think about how your membership on this council connects to your professional life first symbol that you'll show everyone, and then how this work on the council impacts your personal life and your passions or interests, things like that. And that's what we'll share for introductions today. We'll have everyone share their, their symbol, what it is, why they drew it, how their work connects to this council, and then how this council has impacted your personal life. We have another two minutes for you guys to finish your drawings and your thoughts. There are markers too if you want to get real creative. People are going to see us on the next one. We can use these. Can we? I could pass this on. We could do that. Pass that to me. Unless you just would rather not. I mean, you could pass those. Eric, do you want us to pass this around? This one work? Is this one working or not? So Kathy's going to come around with both microphones. Apparently we need two for the live stream and the room. Um, so she'll start off and, and bounce around, and you guys can stand up and share your, your content and why you're here, how it connects. Um, I think it's really important that we point out that everybody has a different role on this council. Everybody's going to come from a little bit of a different perspective, um, either personally or professionally, and that's why I want to do this so that we can all see how we each have it. Okay, we'll go ahead and start. Um, I think Bert's got a responsibility to go someplace else, so I'm going to ask him to go first, and uh, you get to hold both. Yes, two mics. 
do I feel important or what? So my symbol is a peace symbol for my home. And the reason that I drew that is because it's where I find peace and quiet and serenity because I garden, I grow things, and I craft. I do stained glass crafts. I like to give them as gifts at Christmas time. And my work symbol is the sun. And I put down hope, resilience, TA, support, guidance, and leadership is what we provide at KSDE. And we want people to understand that that's what we're designed to do is to work for you. You don't work for us. We work for you. So that's mine. Hold up your picture, Bert. They're a little small, but there's my peace sign and there's my sign. Thanks, Bert. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and go next just because I'm standing up. Um, I'm uh, retired uh, from the Wichita Public Schools. I was an educator for many, many years. Uh, mostly worked in administration, uh, mostly middle school kids. Uh, some with high school, and then I worked in central office. So, but uh, being retired, um, I put my happy place outside taking a walk. So, because uh, uh, I love to get out, and even on this morning, I'd probably be on a walk right now if I wasn't here. Uh, but then, um, so uh, family's very important to me also. Um, I have two boys and one grandchild and two grand dogs and two daughter-in-laws and they're just great. So, uh, and I do love to travel also. So, but being on the state board for eight years, uh, Jim Porter asked me to continue on as the chair of the uh, council. And so I was happy to do so and uh, do enjoy the passion and the work that goes with this particular organization. So I'm gonna start over here and I'll hand you this and that it might be easier if I hold this. Sounds great. Hi everyone, my name is Melanie Scott. I'm a school counselor in Dodge City, Kansas. Oh, thank you for holding that up. This is my 22nd year in education. I'm also a PhD student at K-State and um, my symbol on the left is my school and on the right is myself, my two kids, um, a book because I always believe in learning, continue learning, growing and then the mountains. We just came back from Colorado. I did my first 14er. That's my, woo, yes. <laughs> and my nurture is nature. And so I think that all ties to mental health is, um, that is something that's always been my passion and I wanted to make sure that there are resources in place for when my kids grow up and my grandkids as well. Thank you. Okay. You wanna do it? You're good. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to come over here. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, great. That and that. Hello, everyone. I'm Judy Rodman. I'm the a, a CEO of Sunflower House, the Child Advocacy Center for Johnson and Wyandotte County. So for work, mine was literally a house with a sunflower in it. <laughs> Self-explanatory. And then for personal, I have, I'm kind of copying you a little bit, I have a peace sign, a heart, and a smiley face, so peace, love, and happiness. So that's what I look for in my personal life. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm Kathy Krusenbrock Gossmeyer, and for my work sign, I have a windmill. I'm not much of an artist, but it kind of looks like a windmill, maybe. Anyway, and that's kind of the symbol of the service center. I'm going on my 42nd year there. I'm director of special education. And then on my personal side, I have all kinds of people, starting with my immediate family. And I was just sharing with somebody a little bit ago who was telling me all about their grandkids, that all I have is grand dogs. I keep hoping for some grandkids one of these days. But anyway, um, and then lots of other people around it because we have a big extended family. I'm married to an Osmire. If you know Osmires are like buying weed or rabbits. And uh, the Kirsenbrocks, there's quite a few of them too. So family and... Uh, and everybody we touch is important. Good morning, I'm Mark Torkelson. I'm from Southeast Kansas, so it was a beautiful drive this morning. Spent many years at West Oak. I'll have to visit with you about that. Um, right now I'm a retired coach, teacher, principal, superintendent, and I'm on the school board where I live in Cherryville now, so. I represent the three to one A uh, district in this committee. 
So, and as far as my picture, it's just a board table, which is all I can do. And uh, family is my family, so it's very important to me. Thank you. Hi, y'all. Kelsey Torres. I serve as a behavioral health consultant at the Kansas Department of Health and Environment, KDHE for short, um, in our Bureau of Family Health. And so um, I have two stick figures, which represents uh, healthy families, healthy uh, um, communities, um, which is kind of what we strive for within our bureau. And then on my personal side, I have some mountains because that's the extent of my artistic abilities. So all of this brings together like healthy, happy people and um, positive wellness is what we strive to achieve. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sherry Demoline with the Shawnee Mission School District. I serve as the special education director there. Um, I My pictures for work, I have pictures of um, small stick figures of children, making sure that we're keeping in our decisions the forefront of the kids that we serve. And then on my personal side, I have um, stick figures of my family, including um, a stick figure dog, um, because again, I think that what we do in our work can then translate and make the world a better place for our families. So. Hello, I'm Casey Dahlke, Executive Director for Children's Advocacy Centers of Kansas. So we are the statewide chapter organization that provides direct support to the 17 child advocacy centers across the state. Uh, my work symbol is little, I assume they're little children within um, a son. And uh, my, my personal symbol is a home with all of my kids. We're a family of six. Thank you for the <laughs> administration. <laughs> Uh, so I'm here and I find the importance in these meetings because uh, I enjoy the linkage to school systems and child welfare because I do understand and when it comes to my work being in child welfare for over 13 years, legacy is important to me in creating that change so that we can connect people and make sure that children um, of all socio and economic statuses have happy, healthy childhoods. I'm Amy Wells, um, part of the School Mental Health Initiative with TASN. Um, I always say that this was the place uh, on this team five years ago where I finally met people who thought and cared like I did um, and always wanted to keep coming back, but then I started working for them and then I couldn't come back anymore, but I get to be here today um, as a part of this, <laughs> Carrie's laughing at me. I have a son inside of the state of Kansas because I feel like with being a part of TASN, we get to take care of and love this entire state as a part of our district community leadership teams and the work that we do on the School Mental Health Initiative and with the support of the School Mental Health Advisory Council. On the other side is a house with a a heart because I have limited drawing abilities and limited focus abilities and three teenage daughters, <laughs> a dog, and an amazing husband football coach. So my whole world is brought together in this room. My passions from being a principal and a teacher for a lot of years, 20 years. I could probably keep talking, but I won't. <laughs> Oh, yes, awesome. thank you. <laughs> Do you want me to hold it or you? Okay, okay. I get to hold both, wow, okay. Hi, I am Erin Hambrick, and this is my first time at one of these meetings. Um, I'm an associate professor at the University of Missouri, Kansas City, and I um, have had the privilege of consulting with the Tazin School Mental Health Initiative for maybe close to two years now. It all started during the COVID pandemic, so I don't know, it's all running together. Um, but yes, very excited to be here. So on one side, I put a book. I also have limited drawing um, capabilities, but I spend a lot of time um, doing research on um, children's mental health. I'm a psychologist. Um, and then I put a tennis racket on the other side because um, I play a lot of tennis and I, I'm actually really passionate about how um, we can really get kids moving to get them thinking better and to get them relating to each other better. Um, and so I'm just excited to be here and listen in and um, see how hopefully I can contribute to um, children's mental health in Kansas schools.
Hi guys, um, I'm Kristen Sheldon. I'm a state trainer with the School Mental Health Initiative. So along these um, lovely ladies right here. Um, on For the professional side of my drawing, uh, similar to Amy, I drew the state of Kansas with a sunflower um, in the center. So we obviously spend a lot of time together. We joke that we share a brain sometimes. Um, we have to have each other um, to get things done. So. Um, love the work that our team does for educators across the state and um, our DCLTs, our district community leadership team. Um, my through line I put is growth. Um, so on the personal side of my drawing, I, um, I just have a random assortment of um, drawings as far as reading, books, plants, um, and we have a new puppy, so there's a very um, sad looking dog here. but. <laughs> Hi, I'm Diane Gerstead, and I also am retired from Wichita Public Schools, but for the last four years I've been working on the School Mental Health Initiative Teams Project, and so the MHIT project. And so for my work side, I might have been a little too literal, but I actually drew a wastebasket. Not, <laughs> not, not about the work, but about kind of the messiness of, you know, all the things that are going on and how we have to make all these interconnections, and there's never a clear path between you know, where we're going and how we get there. And so on my other side, I drew um, Kansas Prairie. It may look like an Iowa cornfield, my background, but to me that's a symbol of renewal and resilience, which is what all of the work that all of you are trying to do to help people renew and be resilient in their life. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jose Cornejo. I'm the uh, uh, school social worker for Lawrence Public Schools. Uh, on, on the professional side, I, I drew hats because as a school social worker, you wear lots of hats. You're problem solving, you're collaborating, you're consoling, you're coordinating, you're doing all those roles to get kids connected and families engaged, and not only in their kids' academics, but also in the community process. And on the personal side, I drew a tree. Um, I believe in the root system of understanding your family and your background, but also provide shelter, it's a structure, provide shade, it can provide comfort, and I think those are the things sometimes we need to provide our youth is, is helping them understand their background, but also giving them the shelter and the comfort that they need to uh, survive and thrive in, in today's world. I'm Jamie Dover, I'm a school resource officer in the city of Mays. Um, been doing law enforcement a long time, seeing a lot of mental health issues. Obviously, I'm a, I'm a little less eloquent, and I'm glad to see that we're not all artists. Um, <clears throat> but I think my role is pretty much uh, self-explanatory. Um, I drew a, a badger, a shield, on the law enforcement side, or the job side, and a house on the other side, because that's where I relax. Hi, I'm Carrie Haig. And so on the work side, I drew a star. The things coming out of it was the first thing that came to my mind because I think about KSD as being aspirational, guiding, and um, in some respects also, maybe I think it was inspired by you as well. But, because we also have that somewhat enforcement role, but now I have to look up why the star is that symbol. You know? Okay. And then on the personal side, I drew, I started to draw a mandala. Because, uh, you know, when you look at it from far away, it all looks like one thing. But then when you get up close, it's actually made of all different parts and pieces and shapes. And that is kind of how my personal life is. Even though from the outside, it looks fairly simple. I have lots of uh, family. Uh, on the inside, and then I also think in uh, parts, and then I put them together to make whole. And my work and personal life are kind of melded together sometimes. So. Good morning. I'm Holly Yeager, and I am the coordinator of the school psychologist for Wichita Public Schools. And on my piece of paper, I um, was pretty literal too. So when you said draw a symbol, I drew one symbol on each side. 
<laughs> didn't get that creative. Um, but I drew a peace sign when I thought about my workplace. Um, I'm very lucky to work with a great group of folks. And I feel like after these last couple of years, our role is to bring peace and bring the calm after the storm. And we're working on that with the current pulse just in the district and the nation as a whole. Um, and as far as the other side, I drew a heart, which is probably self-explanatory for my family. Um, and then what I wanted to share with you all is that um, my kiddos go to 259. So really my work is, my heart's where my work is, my work is where my heart is. So um, uh, yeah, that's, that's me, thank you. Hi, I'm Marsha Leesman. I'm here representing the Kansas Association of School Boards. I think the fact that I arrived late is a metaphor for my life right now. So uh, picking up on the directions, I would have been challenged to draw a line down the middle in that I feel like uh, my professional and personal life are very merged, and I am blessed to work with the Kansas Association of School Boards in that uh, they, they very much walk the walk and talk the talk in terms of a supportive uh, environment that provides social and emotional supports for their employees, and as we attempt to do that, to hopefully reach all kids in Kansas. I guess a symbol, if I had drawn it, would be trying to keep all the balls in the air. We have four grown children in four states. I've been home 36 hours since the birth of my sixth grandchild in Berkeley, California. The seventh one's on the way the first week of September in Florida. So I'm uh, getting a lot of miles in this post-COVID post world. <laughs> and uh, I'm happy to be here for the first time. Good morning. I'm Rochelle Soden with Kansas Children's Service League, and we are the state chapter for Prevent Child Abuse America. And I'm a training manager, and on my work side, I drew what is a very sketchy looking pinwheel um, because we do pinwheels for prevention through the PCAA's campaign. And they represent great childhoods through fun, laughter, connectedness, strengthening families, which is all of what we do. And on my personal side, I drew leaves and mountains and trees because I love nature and I have yet to take a child out into nature who doesn't just find things that are fascinating and that they connect with and that they love and so it kind of merges the two and I don't believe there's work-life balance it's work-life integration or merging so <laughs> good morning I'm Kent Reed I'm the school counseling consultant and if I could do art, uh, the professional side would be the KSDE logo. We've been there for 17 years and we're still plugging away. On the personal side, I had a stick family that represented my wife, uh, Kathy, who's getting ready for another year as a Title I reading instructor. Haley, who's uh, here in Wichita, finishing her last year of grad school. Her uh, fiance, Jesse, and uh, their uh, dog, Zero, who's a Bermadoodle. And uh, I would be remiss if I didn't thank you for everything that you've done. We did wonderful things last year, and I think we're going to do even better things this year. So thanks to all of our partners. Well, good morning. I am Tamara Huff, and I'm a TASN provider with the Kansas Parent Information Resource Center. Um, for my work, um, I kind of drew a couple of pictures, but it's all covered by blue skies, and it says family, children, and community with um, a chain link, because if we're all linked together, then we can create blue skies over a school. Um, for my personal, I have um, a circle with a stick figure of me. I'm hoping to get that skinny one day. Um, <laughs> And a lot of hats underneath because I wear the hat of um, a wife, um, a, a child to you know, my parents. I'm a caregiver. I take care of my grown kids when I can. Um, I'm in school writing a dissertation currently, so um, pray for me. And um, I'm a grandmother, and I am a member of my church. So tons of different hats, and I'm hoping that some of those blue skies from work can kind of hover over my home life too. <laughs> Thank you. 
Good morning, everybody. Thanks for coming. What a good turnout. Um, my name is Jane Groff, and I am the executive director of the Kansas Parent Information Resource Center, which is a TASN project. So on the professional side, I did draw, oh, thanks, Tammy, um, families, a family, just families, because that's um, our emphasis. And those of you that were here, and I think I've caught everybody, <coughs> this, because um, this is associated with us professionally, a panel card uh, for families on supporting your child's social-emotional learning. This is a great one for back to school, for helping families um, become familiar with social-emotional learning language. And then those of you that received a book, I think is everyone, are books on social-emotional learning that um, we use as we train and work with families and educators so that they know how they can talk about social emotional learning with families, make it a less scary term, a comfortable term, and do it in a very fun way. So that's why you have those goodies there. So you kind of understand K-PERC is what we're called, Kansas Parent Information Resource Center, and our work, our emphasis on families. And then my uh, personal side, it's just a whole bunch, a big family um, with little ones. We had seven grandbabies in four years, and I'm fresh off of a nana camp where I just had three of them for uh, three or four days, so I'm recovering. And um, so family is both, um, I like the way you said it, Holly. Your, your love is your work, and your work is your love, or something like that. But it is the truth. So family, family, family. And um, what's really interesting is I sat here and listened to each of you. It seems like almost all of you mentioned family and how it is, is just key. So um, that warms my heart. Good to meet you all. But if I would have drawn something, um, it probably would have been a whole bunch of bridges on the professional side. I feel like um, a big chunk of my role um, at KSDE is kind of bridging connections between agencies, organizations, schools, staff members, families, um, and connecting people to the right people, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, on my personal side, this work is my passion. I have um, children that I've adopted through the child welfare system ha who have mental health needs. And so um, this has become a, a huge area of focus in my life um, through that. And so I, I'm very passionate about this work. Um, thank you all for sharing. I hope you could see all of the different types of representation that we have today and all of the different types of representation that we have on this council. Um, the reason we need that is for those diverse thoughts and processes as we know that the commonality is that kids are in schools and in one way or another every single person here is working to help kids that are in those school settings um, so I, I just want you all to know you know the connections um, that are out there for you if you want to look in your packet uh, we did include a hard copy of the bylaws I'm not a big paper print person so oh I don't care about that. Um, I'm not a big printing person so this is one of the few documents that you have in your package but I did want to include it because I feel like it's important to kind of remember what our purpose is and if you go to page one of that document the purpose is to advise the Kansas State Board of Education of unmet needs within the state in the area of school mental health and wellness coordinate with legislators and stakeholders to address relevant issues to effectively best meet the needs of students and staff, mm -hmm. and coordinate statewide collaborative social-emotional character development partnerships with stakeholders that will benefit students. So again, you can see through the introduction how we definitely are attempting to make all of those um, coordinations happening through our stakeholders that are present. Um, the unmet needs is the, the part that's underlined, and that's really the part that we're going to spend the majority of today focusing on. Um, so we'll do a couple of things, and then we'll get to an activity where we come create some priority focus areas for this year. Uh, we have a lot coming.
coming back from the pandemic and a lot of different things that we can be working on. And if we spread ourselves too thin, um, we can't really make the impact we wanna make. So we're gonna try to really focus our work for the year. Um, we do have several areas of advisory that we're going to talk about and I'm going to actually have um, different people speak to this while the person is happy. So we, this council advises the State Board of Education on those unmet needs for students, but it also advises the SPDIG, the State Personnel Development Grant, which is what the school initiative, school mental health initiative program is through, and KPERC is with the SPDIG grant, and Families Together is also with the SPDIG grant, so that is one group of people that this council um, advises. The other group um, of people that this council advises um, at times and gets information from is the MHID, which is the School Mental Health Intervention Team. It's so close, guys, it always gets really confused, but the nice thing about it is um, I, I just have to tell everyone I'm really excited this year to see uh, we've had star applications come in that have clearly um, used data for their social emotional evidence from both of those programs that we do advise on um, as their, their evidence for their applications for star recognition for KSPE. Um, and so it's exciting to see that kind of those programs are merging and the systems are, are becoming in place um, and through the state. So Kathy, do you wanna talk a little bit about the Board of Education? Sure, be glad to. Okay, um, this council actually was started, look down at Carrie, I guess it's now five years ago. <laughs> um, it was started uh, when the State Board of Education was looking at uh, the ongoing uh, mental health needs of our children and quite frankly, just families, staffs, and uh, felt like that we really needed a council to kind of take a look at and coordinate and made it, make advisory suggestions to the state board. Um, prior to the pandemic, we really went to the state board once, sometimes twice a year and made some more formal presentations. Now, since the pandemic, we really haven't done those as much and we probably need to contact the board and think about going back and reestablishing that uh, procedure. Uh, although we were in contact with them and I was certainly in contact with them and uh, members of staff were in contact with the board regularly. Uh, we really, I think it's been a little while since we've actually made a presentation. So, um, um, but we do get feedback actually both ways. Uh, we get feedback from them, things that they'd like for us to look into. Uh, and then we give uh, suggestions to them based on what, uh, if you go back and look kind of over the years, uh, the bullying prevention, we did a lot of work on that for quite a few years. Uh, we put together a whole protocol, all sorts of information that was given and is now uh, for all of the schools really throughout the state. Uh, there's others that we have done. Um, what? Suicide yeah, the suicide toolkit that we worked on really after, after the bullying prevention. Uh, suicide toolkit is really a phenomenal resource. Uh, if you haven't seen that or your district's not using that, you might wanna contact one of the staff members as far as how to get a hold of that because that's a phenomenal resource also. So those are uh, probably initially some of the really big projects we worked on and then there've been uh, some others as we go. So as we're working today and we go through this activity that we're gonna start on, we need to think about some things, um, you know, gosh, there's ongoing things and certainly, um, I don't know that we'll ever say recovery from COVID as we're into what, round three or four, seems like right now, but, um, so, but as we recover from the pandemic, there's certainly been things we've uh, suggested from there, but we're gonna continue with other things and uh, we'll have some topics today. So uh, State Board is a big vehicle, a big organization that we do advise to that has impact on really the whole state. with the school mental health initiative um, again through our SPDIG grant 
And Amy's gonna just give some updates on that project and what's been happening with it. And then I'm gonna give the microphone to Carrie um, so she can talk about our new grant application and where we're at with that. She doesn't know that yet, so. <laughs> she's, she's ready. <laughs> this began, our work began out of the SIDIG, which is a lovely little acronym, but focused on really professional development to support the mental health needs of the children and youth um, across the state. Where we are, we're just finishing up the last five years of that grant. I know people, five years, where did those go? Um, we feel that for sure, but when we look back at the work accomplished, um, we've got some amazing teams across the state, 10 teams um, collaborating across community mental health centers, um, school districts, and other community partners, making decisions together to how to support children and youth. We've provided lots of professional development that's been open across the state as well, um, but we've been focused on supporting those 10 what we call DCLTs, district community leadership teams. And when we came in, as Shanna mentioned, Many had mentioned in their STAR application the work of their DCLTs and how that supports the social emotional growth aspect that is a part of our accreditation. Um, it was really exciting. She said, this is giving me goosebumps. I said, girl, it's giving me goosebumps too. Because you know you do the work and you see the, the amazing effect, um, but when teams begin to state themselves, this is helping us make better decisions for our children and youth um, and their families, I look over at Jane, that's never a part that we leave out. Um, we do have a presentation in this conference later this week um, where we're sharing some of those resources. Um, when we say we've developed resources, they're accessible across the entire state, even though we're only supporting those 10 teams and they've been informed by the work of those 10 teams. Um, we're not making resources just to say, hey, we think this might work, but people are actually using them on site with us um, we're checking in on it using implementation science, which if you wanna nerd out with me for a minute, it's pretty great. You don't just make decisions and make plans to say we're gonna, you know, we're gonna do this, we're gonna have this goal. You actually follow implementation science, meaning there are phases and specific things that should be done in each phase and exploration. That looks like some assessments around fit, need, and capacity. In installation, it means making some plans. In initial implementation, it means trying things out with a few um, children and youth or a few uh, sites, and then informing that full implementation to say, okay, if this worked this way for the, these groups of children and youth, what does this mean? How does this inform our policies, our practices as an entire district community? So. Um, I get a little passionate and excited. I could probably talk for a little while, probably like an hour tomorrow. <laughs> so is that what you needed, Shanna? Anything else, questions? Yeah, thank okay. you. Okay. Probably just as many as you have any other questions. Okay, all right. And so as Amy said, we just finished up five, first five years um, of this SMHI project for SPDIG, although we've had SPDIG ASU for how long? Ever? 20 years. 20 years. Yeah, here's the update. <laughs> so for the next uh, cycle of, for the application, uh, the, what this is actually within IDEA, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, there's a requirement for a state personnel development plan. And Kansas has focused ours on uh, strengthening and building up our system of support for school mental health. And so that, in essence, what this, this does. The, uh, the next five-year cycle is going to uh, look at scaling up the work that we've started. Uh, generally, these types of statewide, it, we're installing a statewide system of professional development. And generally, my experience has been it takes about 10 years for these to get established. So the, uh, we're kind of in the middle of it on the young side, if you will. And so the, the group will be working with uh, more districts and 
doing more work and more collaboration with the uh, connections with the, all the positions that are funded through the mental health initiative team, as well as focusing on building up more uh, training resources around uh, the neuroscience and making those available. And uh, that's a really exciting uh, new area for us that we don't currently have available. And they can tell you more details about all of that, actually. So, the, um, so we're looking forward to that. And then we also are continuing then with our family focus and have a um, strengthening the role, of intensifying the role that families together and KPERC play in supporting uh, families and parents across the state with mental health. We will. It's a good application. You did good. <laughs> um, yeah, go. So the uh, the team that did the primary drafting of it, the school evaluation team, did a great job in the significant section. It is actually a historical uh, review of the last ten years of Kansas of what. Uh, school mental health and it has looked like and it's really quite fascinating portrayal uh, backed by uh, research citations and everything so we will get uh, connection we will get a link to you guys out for that uh, copy of that to you yep. thank you that didn't get you in trouble. no that's good so I want to just kind of reiterate there's two different Project. So the SMHI, the School Mental Health Initiative, is the project that we use to really do a lot of family and educator, professional development, those DCLTs where we're connecting communities and schools together to help make sure that resources are available for students. Um, and then the second one is the Kansas legislatively funded, the MHIT project, with the, which is the School Mental Health Intervention Project which that provides an actual person, like human on the ground in a school that's um, a family liaison who provides those connection services and helps those schools with that. So um, part of the work that we're doing is trying to tie the two together so that our systems are working directly with our people um, that are working in the field, if that makes sense. So Diane is gonna talk a little bit about MHIT and where it's been and where it's going. background and that's true so we are different than Tazin um, we are kind of more of a direct support for families and students at the school level and it's also been referred to as a school mental health pilot um, project and so it is a Kansas initiative um, legislative initiative about four years ago and we started with nine school districts and um, six CMHC's so you're here and you were like one of the beginners uh, when you were at PACES. And we, it was a partnership to reduce the barriers that families face to access mental health services for their children and then who consistently access it. So it's one more than just having that first initial go in and um, see a therapist, but then that ongoing therapy sessions or case management that a student might need to really kind of support them and help them in, in their um, struggles. And also a focus on students who are in the foster care system. So to identify those students and to make sure that we are talking to each other and that we are receiving um, services for them. And we all know the barriers that families face. I mean, it's distance, transportation. Um, it's, um, there's many people have jobs that aren't flexible. And so when you're able to have services um, school-based, whether it's remote, <laughs> or in person, it's very beneficial to our families. Um, as uh, Shannon mentioned, um, the grant funds part of the salary of a school person who's hired by the school district, who's a school liaison, and then there's also a small portion that goes to the CMHC to offset some uninsured, underinsured expenses that they would have. 
But kind of the beauty in it is that it has an MOU, and the MOU between the school district and the mental health provider allows them to share information, educationally appropriate information about the student. So the FERPA, HIPAA issues <laughs> that are always a barriers, if the parent agrees, if the parent signs off on it, that's our key, then we can um, share appropriate information. So the school liaison kind of basically is that the, their chief role is to be a coordinator and a communication pathway. And depending on who's hired by the school district, some of them also can provide direct services for students to kind of support. Um, so, and some of our families aren't ready to make that step, right? So again, it's m another person who can support our kids. So we measure um, on our side the things that impact the school. So we measure attendance, we measure behaviors, internalizing, externalizing, and academics. And over the course of the four years, um, our data has shown that our uh, students who are in services um, and have identified, we only identify the issue that they have. So if they attend school all the time, but they have great academics, we're not measuring that. We, but if they're you know, depressed, that's, then we're measuring internalizing behaviors. So typically, it's, we're seeing like 70% improvement in those measures. And academics, of course, is the lagger. But typically, it's like into the low 60s, we see improvement, 60% improvement in academics. So fast forward, what's going on now? Uh, we're in front of the legislature a lot because we're a legislative initiative. We're in the budget, but we're not in the statute. So we are a proviso. So it's soft money, it's year to year money, uh, which obviously makes some school districts nervous about getting into it because it's year to year money. The governor recommended that and the legislature adopted this year that we expand an additional $3 million. So that's a total of about Ten million dollars. We're in about. We were in 55 school districts, including Mays. Um, very strong program in Mays, and uh, the state board of education this month just passed and adopted that we're going to expand into 12 additional school districts. And also, the governor recommended and the legislature agreed that there will be a study. And so, some sort of study is going to happen between now and I think the start of the legislative session. And from what you know, because we don't know what will happen with the study, but um, hopefully they'll have some conversations about putting this in statute and kind of really making it more permanent um, going forward. So we always have some, you know, the need is huge. Um, the good thing about our grant is it's really flexible. Um, and it, so it looks very different in uh, Plainville than it looks in Wichita. Um, so it allows that flexibility. Of course, the challenge for all of us is the lack of behavioral health workforce. That is a huge challenge uh, across our state. Um, and that impacts across everything, you know, corrections, law enforcement, um, schools, families, um, jobs. So um, I'm looking forward to watching what comes out of this. I actually am stepping away from it. I'm going to attempt to re-retire. I didn't do it very well the first time, but um, we'll still be watching all of this because it's been a labor of love. And I want to thank all of you, many of you at, in this committee. First of all, I've taken information I've learned from you and shared it with our group. And Shanna attends our meetings. We meet with the li um, our liaisons meet monthly. But many of you have provided um, presentations and offered your services and your um, to our group, and that's been really helpful. So just being a pl member of this, I think it's been helpful for our our kind of boots on the ground program. It's been exciting to see the two come together and merge. Amy, did you have something you wanted to add? Yeah, actually, I was thinking it was very uh, like new addition thing. How, is the, how are those two really connected? And I wanted to give a quick shout out to our um, one of our shared people, Samantha Brown in Manhattan, USD 383, um, serving that liaison role, also serving as a DCLT coach with the SMHI project. And I might just say, doing an amazing job of combining the two very seamlessly and really, um, she's a model to me um, as far as what those two could look like together. And it's very beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I ditto that on Samantha, she, she's the go-to. 
Um, so hopefully you all got to hear some of the pre-identified the unmet needs that we had already identified um, prior to today and prior to this work year and how we're addressing those. And that work continues. That work isn't stopping. That work continues and we still have a long way to go. We're definitely not done. Um, but as we prioritize things for this coming year, I want you to keep uh, the things in mind that we have already done. Um, Mr. Kent, are you about ready? Okay, we had a slight change to the agenda at the last minute because we were finally able, thank you to Kent Reed, to get some formal guidance um, out to everyone regarding the House bill um, that has to do with non-academic surveys that I'm sure you're all kind of wondering what we do with that now. So Kent is our guy, and here we go. How's this? Does this work, Eric? Okay, fine. All right, as, as Shanna alluded to, one of the things you guys helped us with <laughs> immensely last year was House Bill 2567, particularly Section 27 that addresses academic or non-academic tests and surveys. And it really led to more questions than answers. And so once it passed, uh, we had several conversations internally uh, with leadership, with consultants, with our attorneys, etc. And we came up with guidance for 2567 section 27 specifically screeners and we'll talk about that in a moment. Okay Kayla? All right so uh, and we included this in a mailing to everybody and I also put in a little chart that's a little bit easier to follow than the slides but uh, but essentially what this says is uh, what the statute actually says. And you know, just to summarize, we're talking about anonymous surveys or non-academic tests generally that are copyrighted. And the classic example is Communities of Care Survey. And even though I don't think the committee was aware of it, the YRBS, which is what CDC uses, and we do administer that in Kansas, and that's a Youth Risky Behavior Survey. Okay, all right, uh, we have been an active consent state since the Student Privacy Act was passed five or six years ago. It's been a while. All right, so parents have to opt in. That, that wasn't new. But what this statute specifically did was that it makes us create a window, a four month window. If you're going to administer something before, like in the first semester, you have to start the protocols for active consent uh, a little bit earlier and then if you're going to give something in the spring again you have to make sure that it fits into that four month window okay um, a lot of things that was written in the statute and, and of course Diane followed it uh, you know almost on a daily basis there for a while um, it said that you're not supposed to collect uh, PII personally identifiable information but we weren't doing that in the first place so there was some redundancy uh, in the bill that actually schools have adopted as best practice anyway, okay? Uh, one other thing that the bill did is that if a student walks into the classroom and you are administering the CTC, they can opt out. Okay? Any questions about that? Okay. Yeah. If you're scheduled and you've had parents opt in, okay, and you give the CTC and the kid walks into class and just doesn't feel like they're in the mood, they don't have to take it. They can opt out. Exactly. Okay. All right, uh, Kayla. Again, just a reminder of what we're talking about in section 27, which would be those surveys, okay? Uh, there are some districts who adopt their own climate surveys, and really that's what we're talking about, the climate and culture surveys. The same rules apply to locally developed surveys, and Castle does have a climate uh, survey. And again, these are surveys that the students fill out. And we get to my sabers, you know, and sabers is a little difference there. Okay, next please. 
All right, and here's where we address essentially what we're going to call the screener exemption. And the idea is that these screeners, MySavers, Panorama, Zello, all ACT products including Mosaic, NAEP, all right, and then some locally developed measures, they all are academic in nature in that they support the academic mission of the school, they support the state board goals, for example, graduation, post-secondary, SEL is a board goal, and that takes us back to the argument about why we got involved in the SEL, well, if you can't win their hearts, you'll never win their minds. And then if you think in terms of the Kansas, Kansas Can Competency Framework, that wheel, Amy and Patty were brilliant in adding the cognitive domain, and that crosses over into the academic, okay? And this slideshow is what uh, our new deputy commissioner, Dr. Ben Proctor, is going to be sharing with superintendents beginning next week. And I'm going to read this to you because I don't think Carrie probably can uh, read it back there. But although, although the above measures are considered academic and not subject to House Bill 2567, there's your exemption. KSD suggests promoting family engagement, Jane, right on, and transparency when collecting this type of data. Family engagement and transparency are enhanced by posting the tools online, which again, you know, is one of the best practices of active consent, following parent opt-in procedures, sharing how data is collected and utilized, and providing links to online resources associated with the tools, okay? This was a huge win. Now, even before we got to this point, we had a huge win at the end of the session because the original Section 27 did not address suicidal ideation, okay? And there was a need to do that because we need to crisis management. Whether we like to or not, we need to. And so with the help of folks in this room, folks that are listening, live stream, especially in Shawnee Mission, uh, the Kansas Counselors Association, the Kansas uh, Social, uh, School Social Workers Association, we were able to put in a suicidal ideation exemption uh, in uh, Section 27. Now, the way the guidance is going to read is any staff member who brings in a kid who is a threat to themselves or to others. And here's the reason for that. Section 27 conflicts with mandated reporting, and we can't allow that to happen. And so instead of putting in the guidance suicidal ideation, which is in the statute, we blended those two thoughts, mandated reporting and the FLAT Act and uh, 2567 with the phrase, any child who is a threat to themselves or to others. And then we go through with the protocols, you know, active consent, et cetera, okay? All right, Di Diane, you had your hand up. Behavior questions is like how students feel and things like that. I mean, it's not all just straight academics, right? You're saying right. that the whole thing should be set up from the university. Right. Uh, my sabers, for example, is uh, what a student fills out, and it does have personal beliefs, et cetera. But there is a uh, direct link between how they feel about themselves and how they feel about certain social emotional issues and academic progress. And it's only one component. It's not the overall. You know, you have other components of, of fast bridge measurement. So it's my understanding, and Kent can correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding that if it's being used to drive daily instruction for social emotional growth, then it would not be part of the house bill. If it's being used for other purposes and, you know, like the KCTC, that doesn't impact directly the classroom or the student academically, then th it falls under those protocols. So if it's driving instruction, driving the instruction, the academics of the student, then that's where it, yeah. right?
in other words, Diane, in this, in the case of Sabres, Fast Bridge, right, that's one component that is measuring academic readiness and intervention. It might be social emotional, but we have tied social emotional into academic progress repeatedly. Uh, Jose, since when? We first started and developed the social emotional character development standards. Yeah, merge, integration, et cetera. It, you have to have one to have the other, essentially. And if it's, if, if it's a component of that larger overarching academic intervention and readiness tool, then it's exempt. Now, if it's standalone, you just have to follow the current protocols that you have for those kind of things. Correct, Shannon? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Well, what they're going to have to do is pre-plan and have another activity while the other kids are taking it. They're doing something different. Yeah. That should be uh, in the information that's shared uh, on on the line, on their web page. What the parent or the the student? The, stu the student can do it in the moment. There isn't anything specific that says they have to do that, no. Okay, other questions? <laughs> incentivize it. Um, it. You know, heck, let's be honest, they did it during, for state assessments, <laughs> so, you know, why not? You know, be creative. I, I think the thing, and, and this came up at, the boor, at board meetings when we've talked about the CTC, there are just some families and some kids who don't understand the importance of what we call student voice. When I provided uh, testimony to the legislature, and Diane, you'll probably remember this, we tried to explain to the committee, the K-12 Budget Committee, and I don't know how it wound up in that committee, but it did, that students have a voice. We understand family engagement and transparency, but we also understand that there, there's a need for kids to uh, tell us what they're thinking and what they're feeling. And we use that information to drive decision making. Anything else? Okay. Thanks, everybody. If anything changes, we'll let you know. <laughs> Stay tuned. Yeah, and just please know that we're all doing our best to stay up with this, and so it's it's kind of a work in progress and a learning curve altogether that we'll figure out. Um, but do feel good that Dr. Proctor has stepped in to help give some um, actual guidance on it and so that we can get that out to everyone. Um, Right now, we're going to take a about a 10-minute break. We'll come back at 10, yeah, we'll come back at 1020. How about that? So you guys have some time to chat and network. Um, there's restrooms out in the hall. There's water at the back. And at 1020, we'll get started on our main activity for the day.
I've often said, I mean, I, I love the, the, that we had the virtual option during COVID and I, it certainly allowed us to continue our work, but well, one of the things I like about these in-person ones is when we do take breaks, we have such a great time to network. And uh, it's so much, so important to have those informal conversations and uh, what we're able to learn from one another and ideas, uh, I mean, amazing ideas come up during that period of time. So I'm gonna have Judy a little later share something that she just shared with me about that kind, kind of came from this committee. I think you, you'd all be pleased to hear some things that they're doing. I'm gonna turn it back over to Shannon and we're gonna take some of that information and spend some time on an activity to kind of give us direction for this next year. Yeah, sounds good. So um, I am on probably 20 different committees, boards, councils, et cetera. Um, and they're all revolving around different topics. And it seems to be that every single one that I'm on has identified unmet needs that somehow impacts school mental health. So I'm gonna throw out some phrases and words that um, have been on my mind. And then what we're gonna do is you guys are gonna have about five minutes of your own personal think time to jot down some ideas of what you see as unmet needs from your perspective and your work experience and your personal life right now for school mental health. And then we'll do some table talk time with your partner about that. And then we'll do shout outs. Um, and then we'll continue the activity from there to kind of develop our priorities. Um, again, going all for, you know, hands-on activities. So um, here's, here's ones that I just wanna throw out there. Um, mental health first aid for school staff. Adult mental health. The crisis helpline and 988. Restorative justice, alternative discipline, human trafficking in schools, vaping and the role of fentanyl. So those are ones, ideas that I um, come across a lot just to kind of get you started. So if you wanna take five minutes and jot down your um, thoughts of unmet needs, unmet needs, that would be great. I wanna throw out while you're thinking, uh, the state board has, they do have a council that's working on vaping. I don't know if they've included the fentanyl in that or not. That's pretty recent stuff, so, uh, and it's big. Yeah, it's bad, okay. And we'll check on that, cause, uh, and see if they're having those conversations. That might be good to, um,
down if you want to converse with the people next to you um, and kind of compare notes and see if there are ones that overlap um, that you want to highlight or talk more about, t talk out your thoughts. We'll give about 10 minutes for a table talk. If you want to move to another table and talk to someone else, you can do that too. Um, so feel free.
We've all had time to think. We've all had time to talk. Let's bring it back together as a group. Kayla is going to be our scribe. She's going to take down notes of things. Um, we're going to do a shout out, which literally is just, you're gonna shout out your ideas. Kayla is gonna write them down. Um, at that point then, we're gonna put them on big posters, put them all around the room, and really go in old school. I'm so excited. Um, every table has a page of red, yellow, and green stickers. And so you get a sticker for each. So your green is gonna be your first priority, what you think is most important. So you'll hear all the things that are going on the posters and you'll put the green sticker on the poster you think is the most important topic that we wanna focus on this year. Yellow on the second most important and red on the third, on your third top priority. Because we've got so many things we could do and we wanna make sure that we can get some real progress done um, in some areas. So. Anybody start with the shout out? Yeah? For staff? Mental health education for kids. Yep. Okay. Kayla's writing. Staff mental health until we take care of her staff. We're not going to have that trickle down effect of the public, being able to help the kids. So that's her regulation. School staff mental health. School staff mental health. We're burning people out. Okay. Yeah, so staffing, school staffing. Okay, so just general lack of knowledge, like community education. So are you talking about something gets identified, but then they don't know the next steps? And that's what we're gonna, that's the goal. Yeah. <laughs> yes, good job. And access to things. Access to everything. Yeah. So if, if we're going to get serious, we need to be starting with our kids digitally as well as in person. Um, what a bad idea. I, I, I'm a big fan of the intent program. Uh, it's the most impactful thing I've seen on my side. Uh, I work hand in hand with them every day. In conjunction that, we need to start talking about drug counseling, not just clinicians and therapy in school, but drug counseling in okay. school. So that's why you're here, you know, yeah. the, we need you. No, those are great because they impact the mental health of every single student and the, and the school culture and climate. So yeah, definitely. And then we also need to address, like she said, the staffing, mental health staffing is, is huge and poor right now. I mean, there's not places, we went time where KDC became Joe, they didn't have beds for kids and we have suicidal kids that can't go into them. Sounds good. You got all those, Kayla? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to pick back up on that. Um, that it's going to be an early education prevention body issue um, when it should be to deal with social media safety, with transition, to creating safety in the normal ages of a child progressing through school. Um, so that early education piece on body
Say that again.
throw another one out. Oh, sorry. What did you say, Jose? Say it again. Required all educators in Kansas to at least bring in neuroscience and education to some of the younger siblings and realize that the child's going to slow down and don't want to realize whether I have an interaction with the student and so on and so forth. Type of encouragement. I mean, we have differences with our good Samaritans. We don't don't sometimes <laughs> go head to head, but sometimes you say, hey, I just want to take a break, I can come back and we talk about this later, right? Sometimes we don't provide the kids that grace. Kids say if adults are with us more, then we would have a better understanding of, of how we support our peers. peers. Peers are going to peer to make sure we're safe. So if we can educate kids on mental health in school, give them the background of what mental health is, that will help also in Kansas be systemized mental health so the kids might be a little bit more open to going to a mental health provider. But right now, if kids are going to kids and then peers, Yeah, a couple of things come to my mind that, that I've processed and, and thought out with Carrie a little bit. Um, one would be teacher prep um, and or micro-credentialing um, on neuroscience and, and those topics, um, TRSP. Um, so teacher prep, I think, is a, a good idea as well. It seems to me, yeah. Shan, I'm sorry. Jane, do you want to piggyback on that? Yeah. Well, it, and, and one thing I was thinking about with all the different issues Sammy and I were having a discussion is that they can, they can and they should all lay on the bed of diversity, equity, and inclusion in terms of um, students and or families. Um, is their group being heard? Is it... Um, how do we talk about culturally that? relevant yeah yeah do they feel uh, relevant um, students of color or students with disabilities do they all um, feel heard do they have that voice and yeah, yeah. 
to me, that's kind of like the bed. And as educators, um, again, pre-service some, but, but currently teaching educators, we need professional development in that. We need to hear it, we need to hear it again, we need to hear how to handle. Um, I know every year I feel like I, st I grow in this area of GEI. Um, something new I'm learning. We have a couple more minutes to shout out. What else? When we talk about the wind prevention but in today's society what are we doing about those students that maybe have homicide ideation mm -hmm. you know um, are we looking to find out what are they doing on the front end that we can help so that it doesn't turn into a school shooting situation Okay, so if you don't mind, um, Kayla and I are gonna go ahead and make up some of the posters, but while you're, you're waiting for that, please continue to have these conversations and be brainstorming on how, um, again, we can actually do work with um, these issues, and we know that these issues are all tied together. That's why this whole council is brought together, because you really can't address just one at a time. Um, so, yeah, so be brainstorming, and I know that the leadership is very open to new ideas, so we want to hear about those too. Um, so if you come up with something while we're writing the posters down, feel free to email me since we're running kind of out of time um, for today, and I don't want to keep you guys late. So we'll get the posters written up and then let you go around with your stickers um, and prioritize your thoughts right now, and we'll take it from there.
Uh, Judy's got to step out, as we all know. She has to take a call, or they're coordinating with other groups. I think it's an accrediting organization, so we all know what that means. But uh, she shared with me a little bit ago uh, a piece that she's been working on, and I thought the whole group ought to hear this. Part of it's really a result of the work that this group has done, but it's also kind of, it really kind of applies to some of the things we're talking about, is how do you make things actionable? So they've kind of done some of that. So Judy. So when I joined the C, I moved from the mental health world to the CAC system a couple of years ago, and we had been doing mandated reporter training. And what I realized from our educators is all of our relationships was at boots on the ground level. So with teachers, with school social workers, with school counselors. So we had some, we decided to start gathering feedback, and one of the things we heard was part of the challenges that, that educators had with making reports is because they felt like nothing happened. So sometimes we know things happen, but it doesn't always get back to the person that's reporting. So we came together, we changed our, all of our education programs, we changed our mandated reporter training, and we changed all of our body safety, and then we implemented e-safety for middle school and high school students, and we partner with law enforcement and FBI on those presentations. So um, our district attorney in Johnson County, Steve Howe, pulled together all of the superintendents for a meeting and let us present. And through that, we had um, Olathe School District, Shawnee Mission School District, and the Archdiocese of Kansas City um, reviewing MOUs with us for us to be the trainers for mandated reporter for this, this next year. So we will do the training for, for all of their educators, and we're doing it in two ways. So depending on what works best for the school or the group we're training, we could either do it live, or we could do it on a learning management system that we were gifted this year. The other thing that's in the MOU is our body safety and personal safety training, and so e-safety and all of that is part of it. And then for us to be the crisis responders to the district, if there are allegations of abuse within the system, how do we support our district and how do they talk to educators, how do they talk to parents, how do they talk to students? Um, so we were very excited. So John McKinney and I have been working very closely together with Shawnee Mission. We're just tightening up some of the words in our MOU to get that moving, but all set to start that this next year. And then we had Blue Valley School District and um, USD 500 reach out to us, and we said we can't do it this year. We could do some, but we can't take everyone on, but looking at how do we continue to support our schools moving forward. So those conversations all started here, so thank you. Do I have questions for Judy? Okay. Ask. Oh, Judy, the question was, is it free? Any other questions anybody has for Judy? Kind of a neat story to hear how they've kind of taken those steps. And I don't know about you guys, but mandated reporter training in the school, this was back a few years ago, it was always pretty darn dry mm -hmm. and I don't think very effective. Any other questions or comments for Judy? We may ask you to report on how it goes. Carrie?
Anything else for Judy? Anything else? Uh, looks like we're pretty close, but anything else for the whole group to report out on your recent conversations? Thanks, Judy. Good luck with your accreditation call. Thank you. Oh boy. Uh, 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 uh. 